Hey everyone. Here we are again with another session on reflection. In the last one, we dealt with the concept of reflection, its types and mirrors which are the objects in which reflection is best seen. In this session, we'll see in detail how reflection takes place in plain mirrors. When you look into a house mirror, you see yourself. But have you ever wondered why or how that's possible what's the science behind your reflection come let's have a look let's take a mirror which we use at home and place any random household object in front of it like a burning candle for instance okay now since the candle is burning we have two things to consider here the flame and the candle stick the candle flame produces its own light so it is referred to as a light source the sun the stars a street lamp or a torch light are all examples of light sources the candlestick however does not emit its own light but instead we see it only because of the light reflected off it whether the light is emitted by an object or it is given off the objects the process and principle of reflection remains unchanged we'll understand this by getting back to the burning candle a candle flame is bright on the whole so even a tiny point on the flame gives off billions of light rays for simplicity we'll consider only two rays to be emitted by this point these rays will strike the mirror and will be reflected back following the laws of reflection if we observe carefully we see that the reflected rays do not meet but instead they go their own separate ways The meeting of these two rays only occurs if at the point of reflection the reflected rays were to be manually backdrawn an image of a point is formed when the two rays coming from that point meet in this case the rays didn't meet by themselves they were sort of modified to meet so we say that an image formed in this way is called a virtual image and where have we seen this happen yes in case of convex mirrors we saw in our previous session how they diverge the light rays outwards which are then backdrawn for them to meet at a point in order to form a virtual image and whereas we saw in case of concave mirrors the light rays get converged inwards to meet at a point without the need of drawing them backwards manually hence We don't find virtual image in the case of concave mirrors but something called real image. So simply put, a real image is the actual meeting of light rays, while a virtual image is the non-real or assumed meeting of light rays. Another thing to remember in the case of a real image is that the meeting of rays always occurs in the direction where reflection is happening. while in the case of a virtual image the meeting occurs in the exact opposite direction what we see when we look into the mirror is the summation of billions of point images formed from their corresponding points of our body amazing isn't it so if we compare the object to its reflection in the plane mirror we see that apart from it being virtual there are other characteristics shown by the image considering the following factors first is the orientation when we look at the object we see that the flame is on top while the candlestick is just below it if we compare these positions to those in the image we see that they remain unchanged so when the orientation of image has not changed with respect to the object we say that the object is upright or erect now what can you notice about the size of the image Is it bigger than the object or smaller? Yes, it's the same size as that of the object. Another feature is that the distance of the image from the mirror is equal to the distance of the object from the mirror. The next property which we are going to talk about is quite interesting. Okay, let's give the candle a pair of hands and legs. Now as the object has them, the image will have them too, right? Let's make the candle strike a pose by raising his right arm and left leg and compare this to the mirror image formed. 
we see that the image strikes the same pose, but with the opposite hand and leg. The same effect is seen when we write on the paper with really strong ink and turn the page. And we notice that the writing is reversed now. If we were to hold a plain mirror in front of this, the writing would be aligned properly again. From both these examples, we see that the right and the left aspects are completely reversed. This property is called lateral inversion. As fun as it is, the effect of lateral inversion is given serious consideration when important lifelines like the ambulances are at work. To compensate for the lateral inversion, the sign at the front of the ambulance is spelled backwards so that when the driver of a car in front of it observes the sign, from his rear view mirror, it appears straight to him and that enables him to give a clear sight to the ambulance more faster. Okay, so now let's do an activity based on this. Let's put alphabets like A and B in front of the mirror. Which of these two alphabets do you think would be unaffected by the lateral inversion? When we compare these objects to their images, we see that the letter A remains unaffected, while the letter B appears reversed. What comes into play here is something called the axis of symmetry. This axis is an imaginary line drawn to divide any shape or figure into two similar or identical halves. The letter A has a vertical axis of symmetry, meaning that its right and left halves are similar. The letter B on the other hand has a horizontal axis of symmetry, which means that the top and the bottom halves are similar. So can you guess other alphabets that have vertical axis of symmetry? And what about those that have horizontal axis of symmetry? It is interesting to note that the letters H, I, O and X have both lines of symmetry. That's it for now. We'll go through the ray diagrams that prove and justify these properties in the next session. Believe me, if these concepts are clear, the next session should be a piece of cake. Before we go, let's not forget that apart from being objects of vanity, mirrors teach us valuable life lessons too. Until next time, keep watching, keep learning and follow your curiosity.